Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating this beautiful wall decor piece made from wood and bamboo. Now this piece features corner accents that are removable and interchangeable artwork that you can customize year round. Now this project was inspired by a wreath made by Jackie's Wreaths and Things and this project was requested by my Crafty fans. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools used to make this project in the description box below. I'm super excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey, hey, and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now, if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into the project. Now here is the inspiration photo for this project. Now this was created by Jackie's Wreaths and Things and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Now this retails for over $100, but I wanted to challenge myself to see if I can recreate something similar using Dollar Tree and other inexpensive materials for under $10. Now I've provided the link in the description box below to her site so you can check out all of her beautiful creations. Now for this project, we'll start with an assortment of gift bags and gift box lids of your choice. We'll need four of these 32 inch bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree or Walmart. We'll need four of these mini ornament bulbs from the Dollar Tree. Two ping pong balls that you can get from the Dollar Tree. We'll need one one by two by eight piece of wood from the Home Depot for $1.18 and this is a sample cut. We'll also need some greenery of your choice and I'm using cedar sprigs and garland ties. Also, we'll need some frosty berries for 97 cents from Walmart and some assorted ribbon, and I'm just choosing from what I had on hand. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to cut the wood, and I always head to the Home Depot to get these $1.18 furring strip pieces that are 8 foot long. Now, if you don't have a means to cut the wood, most Home Depot stores will cut it for you at no charge. Now I will be cutting mitered corners on the pieces of mine for a professional look. Now two pieces will be cut at 16 and a quarter inches and the other two will be cut at 11 and a quarter inches. Now you can also use five gallon paint stir sticks too and you will need two packs if you use this method. So now I'm going to lay out my Surebonder silicone mat and protect my work surface while I glue the pieces together. So I just want to lay them out in their place. Now I'll be using the high temperature setting for this and I'll also use these wood glue sticks by Surebonder. Now you just want to start to apply the glue to each corner and you want to press them firmly into place. Now you just want to repeat this on the other corners and you want to make sure that you wipe away any glue that may ooze out of the seams as you go. And here is the frame all assembled. So now I'm just going to take some sandpaper and I want to sand those corners to remove any glue residue that may be peeking out. Now I'll be reinforcing the corners with screws so I'm going to drill a pilot hole about three quarters of an inch down from the corner on all four sides of my frame. And now I'll be using four of the number six one and a half inch wood screws for this project. And then we're just going to apply a screw into each one of those pilot holes. And now our frame is nice and solid. So now we'll start to work on our skewers. Now, as I mentioned before, you can find these at the Dollar Tree, but they're also available in the camping section at Walmart for 88 cents. And they will be the Ozark brand at Walmart. Now we're gonna glue two skewers together on one side and we wanna clip them together as you go. Now these clips are available from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to need two completed sticks for this project. 
So now that all of our wood pieces are prepared, we can now stain them and I will be using this shaker pine color by Ace to resemble our inspiration piece. Now you just want to apply one coat of this stain to the front, the outside, and the inside edges of the frame. And then follow up by applying a coat to the front of the two skewer sets. And then let these sit out to completely dry. Now while those dry, we're going to work on our mini bulbs. So I'm just going to start off by removing the hanger tops. Now I'll be painting these in red acrylic paint, but if you have red bulbs, you can skip this step. Now you just want to apply one coat to all of the bulbs and you want to allow them to dry completely. Now while those are drying, go ahead and grab those ping pong balls and that red and white twine. Now, I already have this twine on hand, but you can also get it in multi-plaque packs at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by adding a swirl of hot glue in the center of the ball, and I want to work that twine around in a circular motion. And you just want to continue this swirl pattern around your ping pong ball until you're almost to the bottom. And then when you're done, just clip that string and repeat this for your other ball. So now that our painted balls are dry, we're going to cover the we're going to cover them with some Mod Podge and we're also going to use some Epsom salt to cover the Mod Podge while it is wet and I'm using what I have on hand. So you just want to start by um, applying a layer to the bulb. You just want to apply a nice thick layer of that Mod Podge. And then go ahead and sprinkle some Epsom salt while it's wet. And you want to make sure you do this for all of the bulbs and let them sit to completely dry. So while they're drying, we can work on our ribbon. Now for the main ribbon, I wanted to use this candy stripe ribbon that I had in my stash, but it's much too wide. So I'm going to be cutting it into one and a half inch strips that are 14 and a half inches long. And you want to make sure each strip has one wired edge and that you seal the raw edge with a lighter. And then the green ribbon is cut at 11 and a half inches long. Now you want to take one of those thick strips and you want to fold it in half to find the center and then fold each end to that center and hot glue it into place. Now once they're all glued, you want to stack all three pieces together and then you're just going to kind of pinch and fold them in the center. And then you can secure them with a piece of string or twine. Now you can also use one of those clips to hold it in place while you tie it. Now once it's nice and tied, you want to go ahead and separate and evenly spread out each one of those ribbon loops. And once it has its shape, just apply a few dots of hot glue to the center to help it hold that shape. So now I'm going to take that green ribbon and I'm going to secure the ends of each strip together with hot glue. And then I'm going to apply a dot of hot glue in the center of each ribbon circle. And now we can apply the green ribbon to the center of the larger ribbon with hot glue. And then we're going to take that second one and we're going to form it in an X on top and glue that into place. And then finally place that last piece down of the center. Now we're just going to repeat this process with a second one. So now that I cut a piece of craft paper out in the shape and size of my frame, I'm going to use this as a guide when I start to create my decorative corner pieces. Now I'll be using some of this greenery I cut from garland, some garland, pit, garland picks that I shaved down, and some berry bunch uh, pieces that I cut from the Walmart bundle. Grab those loose bulbs that we painted and the swirl design ping pong balls. So now I cut a small piece of foam board as a base to start building up my corner pieces. And I'm going to start by adding a few pieces of that cedar greenery and placing one at the top 
one at the side and one in the center. Now since my pieces have wire on the end, I'm just going to stick it inside of that foam piece and then add a bit of hot glue. Now if yours doesn't have wire, just place it on top of the foam piece and hot glue it into place. So then I'm gonna to start to add some garland, garland picks on top and I'm gonna glue them on top of that foam piece. Now this forms our nice little base, so now we can add a generous amount of hot glue to the center of that foam piece and add one of the bows on top. So once that's in place, now you can just continue to add your greenery around that ribbon and around the piece to fill out any gaps to make it nice and full. And then once your greenery is all added, go ahead and trim and adjust as needed. So now that our greenery is done, we can add our berry clusters. So I'm just gonna add a few along the edge of the bow to make sure it's just sticking out onto that greenery. And then you can take your little bulbs and you wanna cut off the little nub on the top and sit those off to the side. And now we're gonna add one of the ping pong balls to the center of the bow with a generous amount of that hot glue. And then finally, you can add those bulbs to the bottom and the top of your corner piece. And you wanna make sure that cut piece is facing down. And then go ahead and fluff out your bow. And here is one of our completed corner pieces. Now you just make a second one for the bottom corner. And here are our two corner pieces completed. So now that our frame is dry, we can add the pane design. Now, what you wanna do is go ahead and flip it over and grab those two skewer pieces. And what you wanna do is cut two pieces to fit the opening. Then you can go ahead and hot glue them in place and then make sure that they're evenly spaced apart. Now, while the glue is still hot, you can still make adjustments. Now you can take your second stick and you can cut a piece that will fit down the center. And then hot glue that piece into place as well. Now once that glue dries, add a staple over each end of the skewer ends for a bit of added security. Now in order to make a channel for the removable art prints, I'll be using six of these tumbling blocks from the Dollar Tree for added height. I'm just gonna place them flat around the frame as shown here. And then I'm gonna secure them in place with hot glue. Now we will use three one gallon paint stir sticks for the rails. Now you wanna be sure to cut about an inch and a half off of one of the sticks and this piece will go along the bottom. You just wanna lay them on top of the blocks as shown here. And then we're gonna secure them in place by adding hot glue to the top of the blocks and pressing those paint sticks right on top. Now, as you can see here, this will create a channel where you can slide your art in and out. So now the gift box that will fit this frame measures about nine and a half inches by 14 and three quarters inches. Now we're gonna use this size to cut out any images from gift bags or gift boxes that are a larger size. We're just gonna trace the shape onto our gift bag or gift box, and then we are going to uh, adhere it to poster board or the bottom of another gift box to make it a little bit more rigid.
So now we can take each one of our prints and test fit them. So first we'll check the full size Waving Santa first. And I got this print from Walmart. And then we're gonna test our Santa that was on the gift bag next. Now this one was from the Dollar Tree. And I cut this truck image from a larger box to test fit. Now this one was from Family Dollar. And since my inspiration photo had a cutout image of Santa, I cut this one from a gift box to achieve the same look. Now to hang our piece, I'm just going to use a piece of thick jute twine with knotted ends. And I'm going to apply two staples at each side. And now we can apply the corner pieces. Now, if you want them to be permanent, you can hot glue them right onto the frame, but I wanted mine to be removable so I can use the frame year round. So I will be using this wire from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut two long pieces for my corner accents. Now I'm gonna be using this painter's tape to hold the corner piece in place while I work. And then I'm just gonna run a piece of wire under the bow and wrap it around the frame. Then flip it over and you wanna pull those wires through and tightly twist the two ends together and clip off those ends. And as you see, it is nice and secure. And then just repeat this on the bottom corner. And now that both pieces are secure, you can add the art of your choice. And here is our completed frame on display. I can't tell you how much I love how this turned out. Now I used a lot of scraps and materials that I had on hand to make this and it really looks great. And the corner pieces are so super cute and they were much easier to make than I thought. And I always use skewers for my panes and they looked really great when they're stained or painted. And check out my Santa, you guys. I love that I can change out the art whenever I like. And here's the full size box cover with a waving Santa. And if you want to remove the background to your Santa, cut around the image and leave just enough on the signs to go under the track on the back. You guys have to let me know what kind of images would you love to display in your frame? Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time.